As part of the Pac-12 Network's Campus Classics, we are joined today by three former Husky baseball players that were a vital, uh, had a vital impact on the April 13, 2017 game where Washington beat number one Oregon State to snap their 23-game win streak. Um, it was quite a game. It was had a lot of action defensively and offensively and some great pitching. we got three of the main players. We have Noah Bremer, who uh, pitched in that game, Willie McIver, who played third and had a key hit, and Levi Jordan, who had a spectacular defensive play to end this game. First of all, before we get started on that game, why don't you guys each fill us in on what you're doing nowadays? Uh, first, you, Noah. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm currently living in Jupiter, Florida. Um, I'm currently with the Texas Rangers. Um, yeah, just kind of holding my own here and kind of waiting for Corona and everything to kind of play itself out. But, yeah, no, I've been enjoying my time with the Texas Rangers, and they've been really good to me. And, uh, yeah, just waiting for the season to start again. Yeah, so fans out there, Noah was drafted in the sixth round after the 2017 season. And then, uh, Willie, you were drafted in the ninth round after the 2018 season. Why don't you update uh, Husky fans and Pac-12 fans where you're at nowadays? Right, so I am with the Colorado Rockies, um, currently waiting for the season to get going in uh, Pleasant Hill, California, in the East Bay area. So just getting some good family time in hanging out with uh, parents and my dog and trying to get some work in at the house while uh, while this pandemic is still affecting so many people. All right, uh, Levi, you were picked in the 29th round of the 2018 draft. Why don't you catch Husky fans up where you're at nowadays? Yeah, so 2018, I was drafted by the Cubs. I'm still with them. Um, been through two seasons, one full season and a short season with them. So uh, pro ball has been good, but Kind of like the other two guys said, we're on the back burner right now, and the priority is not baseball. It's about the uh, health and safety of the public. So we understand that as ball players, and we're doing everything we can to, uh, you know, maybe not find a cure, but be part of the uh, helpful cause to um, hopefully let baseball return at some point. So um, until then, yeah, I'm like Willie. I'm at home in Puyallup, Washington, enjoying time with family and uh, trying to stay on top of training and keeping the body right just being prepared that uh, when they do open the season up again, I'll be ready. Well, thank you. You got a couple of rings, don't you? Don't you, Levi? <laughs> you got yeah, a couple. You got a short season it's... and a full season ring, don't you? Yeah, first two years in a row now. It's, uh, it's been nice. Well, you're yeah. good luck. You're good luck for the Cubbies, then. <laughs> well, again, guys, thank you so much for joining us. I know I know it's, uh, it's a tough time, and hopefully you guys will all get back on the field very soon. So uh, if you don't mind, let's, let's talk a little about the two, 2017 game. So first of all, Oregon State entered this game 28-1 and on a 23-game win streak, number one in the country. And there's already kind of an intense rivalry between the two teams. Um, did you guys lean into this game? Did you guys kind of feel that rivalry a little bit more because they were feeling uh, they were doing so well, Noah? Um, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, we we kind of – Took a backseat to them the the first our first two years or my first two years um, and I, I only got to play there once and and I got I got my butt kicked pretty good um, so yeah I, I I wanted to go out there and and, and definitely dominate and with them being number one it was it was I think that was the best ranking we ever faced so um, no I was definitely I, on that I think you always circle Oregon State on the schedule at the beginning of the year just because those are that's the team that you if we could really like put it on anyone, it would be Oregon State, you know, uh, and especially their 23-game winning streak coming in, number one. We played them pretty good the year before, so I think we were confident coming in as well. Yeah, so that first night, that Friday night at Husky Ballpark, they they stroll in there, and they're sending to the hill uh, Luke Heimlich, who was undefeated at the time. Luke actually would go on to uh, go 11-1 and one on the season, so we ended up, the Huskies ended up uh, tagging him for his lone loss of the year. Uh, Levi, you were teammates with him in high school. Why don't you talk about Luke as a pitcher and kind of the rivalry you two guys had? Yeah, he. we grew up together playing ball on the same team um, for a really long time, and his journey is a pretty unique one. I mean, he. we actually, uh, I think it was 14 or 15 U ball. My, my dad coached our program, and Luke tried out for our team, and we cut him, and he actually went and played shortstop for a different team that year. <laughs> Anyways, um, he – 
turned out to be a phenomenal pitcher and uh, he still is, but uh, it was, it was fun to be able to compete against someone you've grown up with. And I know I can speak for Willie too. Uh, he had a couple guys on that squad that he grew up with too. And um, just the, the, the fact that they were doing so well at the beginning of the year, they're ranked number one. Uh, you have friends on the other side that you in a competitive way, just want to beat. Uh, it all came together and sort of fueled us to, um, you know, ramp it up and play as hard as we could. You try to you try to ignore the fact that they're ranked number one or that they have this incredible record. Um, just from a baseball sense, you try to play a nameless opponent every time, but you can't help but think in the back of the mind, you know, it's Oregon State. They're they're a solid program, and we want to beat them bad. Hey, Levi, you said he, he, he played shortstop in 15U as, as a, a lefty thrower, right? As a lefty, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. So Willie, you had a buddy. You had a buddy that was on there, uh, Oregon State too, Trevor Larnich. Uh, you and Joe Demers were good buddies with him. Why don't you talk about your friendship with him and and, and how every time we Washington played Oregon State, that friendship would either take a backseat or or what was the friendship like during that series? Well, yeah, it was similar to Levi. Like uh, me and Trevor and Joe played ba baseball, basketball. Uh, baseball and basketball together since we were eight years old all the way through high school like pretty much best friends like did everything together um so he's like a brother to me and when you but when we got on that field against Oregon State it was not you don't have that same friendship it's a it's a battle and both of us all of us are competitors so when you get on that field especially going up against a rival school there's uh there's no friendship till after the game nice so let's let's get into the game a little bit. So how it worked out, interestingly, uh, Chris Michaels got the start that day of that Friday night game. Um, he pitched one inning, gave up a gave up a run. So come to the second inning, Noah, you enter this game, and we're down one zero. Now talk about the lineup you had to you had to face. O Oregon State that lineup they had had eight position players yeah. players get drafted four in the first round. Yeah. And then two of the three pitchers that pitched that game, they got drafted too. Talk about what it's like to face a team that talented. Yeah, I mean, when you when you texted me, I had to look at the team because that team was – it was filthy. I mean, it, Nick Madrigal uh, was leading off. Uh, Ryan Anderson, who I don't know why he was in second, was second. And then K.J. Harrison followed by Trevor Larnick, uh, Kane Grenier, you know, the, the list goes on. Adley Rushman, even as a freshman, you know, like he's, he's still, you know, still producing and I'm pretty sure it was a freshman All-American that year all-conference so no I mean it, it, it was uh, definitely looked like a daunting task but you know it was just it was it was just baseball you know at, at that point. Hey those guys were dudes but Brem was never scared like coming in like every every start for Brem was like it seemed like he was on like the best pitcher in the world that's how we felt behind him too going into games so for us, I think Levi can speak to that too, especially on the infield, the way Brem attacked hitters and competed on the mound. Like, you go into every game that he pitches thinking, we're probably going to win this game, even if it's against Oregon State. Well, it's, it's funny you should mention that. I actually have uh, some highlights of this game called up. Uh, no, you went eight innings of relief. You allowed one run, one walk. You had nine strikeouts in this. So, obviously, you were not over – you were not – intimidated by these guys and you really had to go on on today on that game right yeah I mean I, I, honestly I didn't really have the time to 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 think about it it was because it, like you said Chris Michaels started that game um pitched the first inning uh gave up a double a couple doubles gave up a run um and I was in the dugout and then uh as the second inning started uh Chris had a leadoff walk and as soon as that walk happened JK sent me to the bullpen so it was already kind of just let's let's get this going. Like they're gonna they're gonna put you in pretty quick. And the next thing I know, I'm I'm in the game. It's first and third with no outs. And then I was able to pitch out of that without giving up a run. I don't I don't remember how, but I mean I, I got through it. And then after that, it was it was like really said. It was just pound the zone. That was that was the mindset that we were given as pitchers was put the pressure on them, just fill the zone, and with. With these guys behind me, it was it was easy money, especially with on a on a turf field. It was it was my dream. I mean, I'm throwing downhill fastballs, and Levi can field it from anywhere he wants. And Levi and Willie's at third, and it was just it was a match made in heaven for me. 
Yeah, I don't know if you remember this, but Oregon State had runners in scoring position against you in the second, fourth, fifth, sixth, eighth, but you didn't allow any runs in those innings. What what is there was there a pitch you had going that day that you remember that was working the best? I I think I honestly think the the umpire gave me uh, the knees. If I had the knees, these guys can attest. If I had the knees back then, I, it was it was it was game over because I was going down and way down and in with the fastball, throw a curveball, and 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 college ball. No matter who it is, it's it's going to work out pretty good. So um, it was tack first pitch with the fastball, either in or out, and then probably start throwing hooks and splitters. I think that was kind of the, the go-to mix. So with the game just 1-0, um, you guys went into the sixth inning, still trailing one nothing, probably pressing a little bit to get that, that tying run. And fortunately for you guys, William McIver, you came up in the sixth inning. Uh, Jack Meggs led off the inning with a double. MJ Hub sacrificed him to third, and then Joey Walk setting the table for you. Now, you led the team with a two for three day and probably no hit was bigger than uh, your double that came off to tie the game at uh, one. Uh, I'm going to share the screen here, but also can you just talk about the play and remember what you remember from that play? Yeah, I think I was, I, I remember it was a, I think it was a two strike count, like a two, two count or something. And I, I remember correctly, he left the slider just a little bit up and it was like coming low and in, and I just got a barrel to it, just trying to put the ball in play. Obviously, with runners on first and third, no one out, uh, you know, you or one out, you have to put the ball in play. And so I was just trying to hit something hard, and he left it a little up, and I hit a line drive to left center and let my speed do the rest. <laughs> yeah, here's the play. And you can see your reaction when you come in here. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then here's the, here's, the, here's the one where you guys took the lead. Madrigal, who's shortstop, throws the ball away, and you score all the way from second to tie the game up. Now, what do you remember? What do you remember from that play? Because, you know, Madrigal was one of the best players in the whole conference, and you know he didn't make very many errors. And and here he is, two out situation, and he makes an error, and you see that ball. What did you do? Did you just did you take off right away? I'm convinced that I, I got in his head a little bit because I kind of like, if you watch it, I kind of like shimmy and kind of jump around the ball. And I think I got in his vision, kind of threw him off. He was looked at me for a second and then, you know, couldn't make the throw to first. So I'll take a little bit of the credit for that. Well, you know, after that game, so that was the first game of the series. The second and third game of the series, he wasn't playing shortstop. He was moved to second base. So uh, obviously you did something to, uh, to get in his uh, head a little bit there. What's impressive, yeah. what's impressive really about what, what's impressive about that at bat though is the reason Heimlich was so good and uh, a lot of the pitches in the Pac-12 that year were the same way, Bremer included, but uh, he threw so many different pitches for strikes. So like getting in a two strike count with him was challenging because you couldn't uh, you couldn't necessarily zone, you couldn't sit on a pitch, you literally just had to uh, get a barrel to the ball, and that's why uh, hitting a hitting a double in that big of a spot was crucial and extremely clutch so and and he I remember he commanded his fastball like really well especially on the inside corner so that was yes. also something where like I think earlier in the game he got me like jam shot ground out to third base because he was using that inside so I think it would be easy it was always easy against him to try to cheat to that inside fastball and that's when all his other pitches kind of if you let the inside fastball get in your head the other pitches are gonna you know mess you up yep now, I don't know if you remember this. So the game is three to one. We head to the eighth inning, the bottom of the eighth inning. Willie, you let off the inning with a double. And what happens to you? You get pulled out of the game for a pinch runner right away. So you didn't even get to finish this game. Hey, I had a stolen base earlier in the game, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Defensive liability. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I have the speed. I don't know. Coach Meg didn't see it in me for whatever reason <laughs> that day. But, hey, it always feels good to hit a double and then – you know, come into the dugout after a pinch runner and, like, see all your teammates and high-five them and stuff, and everyone's all fired up, especially in a game like that late. Um, and I think you wanted to get Ben Baird out there to third base for a defensive replacement in the ninth, too. So, um, you know, hey, if that's the best way for us to win, I'm down. Yeah. Well, you were you were smoking guys in, in races the next fall, though, remember? Hey, I'm <laughs> telling you, the wheels are there. The wheels are there. <laughs> Yeah, didn't you lead the you know, did you lead the Cape Cod in stolen bases that summer too? I think I finished like second in the league in stolen bases, but that's just because none of the pitchers in the Cape Cod 
thought I was going to steal. So they're like, yeah, okay, the catcher just got the first big deal. And I'd sit there, kind of look like I'm not going to do anything. Then, bam, take off. And I'd just steal it on the pitchers every time. So, nice. All, all right. right. Let's go. I love stealing bases. Yeah. Let's go to the ninth inning. Uh, Noah, now you were still in there. You were well over 100 pitches at this point. Um, and the first person you have to face is uh, Nick Madrigal, who's probably – looking for revenge for his earlier error. He gets on by a, uh, a single. He steals second, goes to third on an error. He eventually came in to score. And then, uh, and then eventually um, we get, we get to, uh, we get to uh, Michael Gretler comes up. Okay. And you got a runner on second base and he hits one into the hole and you're, you're nearing the end of, of your day here, I think. You're close to 130 something pitches, I think, and then a ball gets hit in the hole, and then this happens. Do you, uh, what do you remember about this play that uh, Levi made here? Yeah, so um, yeah, so KJ, so KJ Harrison uh, scores scores magical on the double, um, and then we get another out. So there's two outs, and there's that man on first, and um, it was. Um, who was hitting there? You said Gretler was hitting there. Yeah. And I think all day we're just pounding, we're just flipping them off speed. I think because I, I remember the, the report was he just couldn't, he couldn't handle the off speed. He couldn't handle the hook. So um, down at the end, that was kind of my mindset was to flip what I did early in the game. So once again, just trusting my defense, throwing it over the heart of the plate with the downward, with the downward angle at the knees. I mean, they, they with the umpire giving me the zone, he's pounding the ground and, I just knew I knew my defense at that time. I knew Levi had a range for days, and and he would just he practices those. I mean, you you watch him in batting practice, and you literally have J.K. trying to hit as far into the four hole as you can, and Levi's diving, sliding, doing whatever he wants, and and I mean, and that's what that's why you practice those is for that moment, and, and it couldn't have been a more you know awesome feeling to have that to have that go, and you know to to. To have it go down that way was amazing. It was, it was awesome. weird. It was weird, too, because, like, you see that play and, like, how cool it was. But, like, at the time, it was like you were expecting him to make that play. Because that's <laughs> it, was just, slow, it was slow motion. Time. Like, it was no it was question. Slow motion. Yeah. So, Levi, I mean, what, Levi, what's your take on that play? Um, yeah, I, I guess, like Noah said, uh, I did work on that a lot, honestly. But um, once, the, once the ball was hit uh, – it's kind of one of those – like, the, the first thought is, okay, run on second base with two outs, keep it in the infield right. uh, to prevent him from scoring a run. Let Bremer get the next guy out. Um, and after I laid out and the ball uh, caught in my pocket, the next I was like, all right, let's, you know, just give it a chance. Don't overthrow it. Don't try to do something spectacular. Just, like, get it over to first. And that's why I threw, like, an ugly long hop, weird long hop, you know, no skip hop. off the turf. But long uh, hop, no it, hop. it happened to be right on target. and. Uh, it, it, yeah. Watching it again, it was a it was a tremendous play. But you know, while I was doing it, it's not like you know I was just trying to keep the ball in the infield and and give Naf a chance at first base to record the out. Uh, what ended up happening was in the game on that play was awesome. And I'd been horrible to play it all day, so it just felt good to contribute. So, is would you where do you rank that one among your all time plays defensively? Uh, it's up there based on the, uh, situation, like to end a game like that is pretty, pretty cool. I've made a lot of plays as good as that or better or not quite as good, but like in a situation that doesn't quite, uh, matter or, uh, you know, not as important, but for it to win the game against the number one team in the nation on a 23 game win streak is pretty, pretty good. <laughs> 